ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Obito Potato, and this is Democracy 4, the political strategy government manipulation game where you have to introduce policies, save money, and make difficult decisions in order to retain your place at the top of the pyramid. Right, we are going to jump into a brand new game. Now, this game is brand new. It is in alpha stage. You can get it. Link in the description if indeed you're picking it up. Um, there is only one country that is available at this moment in time. It is the United Kingdom. It is the United Kingdom. Uh, we are going to be playing it. We're going to be playing it with all of the settings left as it currently is. The starting debt is the amount of debt the United Kingdom has at this moment in time. We, of course, are going to be repping the potato party. That's right. Uh, we are going to be going up against the Progressive Fundamentalists and the Social Justice Party. Difficulty is going to be set just as is for now. Uh, as I say, debt is the really key one here because that is exactly how much debt uh, the United Kingdom has at this moment in time. Uh, nothing hurricane-wise, earthquake-wise, compulsory voting, but three parties, that is totally fine. So, if you've never seen Democracy 4... Uh, before. Well, you know what? I'm glad you're here because I'm thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly excited to talk you through some of the changes that have been introduced since Democracy 3. Democracy 3, of course, was a wildly, wildly, wildly popular uh, entry in the franchise. And uh, yeah, I hope Democracy 4 is going to take that to new heights. The development is ongoing. If you're interested in feeding back into the development, pick up the game, give it a play. Uh, let the developer know what you think. Uh, I know for a fact that I've already been in touch with him and, uh, and given feedback on a couple of bugs. And I'm really, really enjoying this game. It's really, really fantastic. Right, so enough about the, the meta game. Let's talk about the, the game game, right? So where are we? What's the, what's the state of our country? Well, we're going to try and save the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is in a pretty dodgy place uh, at this moment in time. 1.81 trillion pounds in debt. We're running a $13.52 billion deficit. That, of course, means that our income is smaller than our expenditure, which I would say is a, is a little bit of a problem. Uh, the there are also these red dots on the on the game board, which uh, basically basically represent big old problems, big old problems that we need to uh, that we need to sort out. Now, given that this is the this is the law and order category, the Lord and law and order area, uh, we've got alcohol abuse, which is showing as a problem, and that is something that we do absolutely want to address as quickly as possible because it's costing our economy 2.39 billion a quarter. This game runs in quarters; four quarters make up a year. It's costing us, what, about nine, nine or ten billion, nine or ten billion pounds a year. So if we're able to solve the problem of alcohol abuse, then we're going to be able to unlock a little bit of extra capability uh, right there. We've also got ghettos as well. That's not good. We've also got organized crime. That's only costing us 57 million, though, so that's not the end of the world. Uh, street gangs costing us just about 600 million, which, again, is a lot of money, but, you know... It might be a lot of money to me and you, but it's not uh, its not a lot of money to the government. Anyway, that's the law and order area. In the in the public services area, we've got an obesity, an obesity issue, which is not good. We've also got respiratory disease, which is also negative. And we've got hospital overcrowding, which is very, very poor. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about what all of these mean. Uh, what this whole setup means as we go, but for now we're just doing a little a little audit of the country so that we know exactly what we've got to try and solve. Uh, we've also got the uncompetitive economy down in the uh, down in the economy area, which is really really bad and probably I would say maybe one of the worst uh, one of the worst negative modifiers that you can really get. Uh, so yeah, that is not good. Okay, so after that little uh, after that little audit, we can see that we're in a not terrible position, but we're not exactly in a in a brilliant position position either. Let's quickly take a little look uh, at who, who voted me in uh, as leader. We've got a current a current popularity rating of 62.40%, which is pretty high to be honest. As long as it's above 50%, I don't care. Uh, we're going to be returned uh, as leader. Uh, and we can actually see all of the different groups that voted for us down the left here, which is very, very cool and makes a, makes a nice change from Democracy 3 where they were displayed in the middle of the screen. So I like this. At the moment, we are just ordering the groups alphabetically. However, we can also, we can also sort them by membership. So membership of the everyone group, as you can imagine, is, is the highest. However, we've got a load of liberals uh, in the country, which is very, very important indeed. So we've got 67 
7% of the population that are currently in the membership of the liberal group, which means, which means that if we want to retain, if we want to retain the leadership of the country, then satisfying the demands of the liberal population is key. Either that or we think about trying to uh, move away from a uh, from a liberal a liberal based a liberal based uh, electorate and maybe we see if we can try and decrease the membership of the uh, of the liberal faction either way it's just something to think about going forward uh, so that is uh, that's just sorted by the number of voters in each and every group as you can see middle income is the next most populous group uh, and then capitalists etc all the way down uh, next we can do by happiness so so the poor, the poor group are actually 100%, 100% behind us, which is great news. Absolutely brilliant. Environmentalists also really, really, really like us. So that is, uh, that is great. So that's an audit of the finances. That's an audit of the, uh, the problems that we face. And that's an audit of our popularity. Let's talk about what we can do to solve these problems. Now, Political capital is the currency in this game, and it is what you it is what you use to do absolutely everything and anything. Uh, we've got twenty of the uh, of the stuff at the moment, and political capital, as you can see, is generated by these six lovely, seven lovely people, <laughs> seven lovely people. This uh, this is our cabinet. This is our cabinet right here, and each and every one of these people generate a different amount of political capital, which goes into the total pot which, as you can see, is, uh, is is 20 right here. This is a little bit of a breakdown. You can see that there is, uh, there's a breakdown from ministers, from popularity, uh, from majority, uh, from emergency powers. That's brand new, I believe. Either way, uh, yeah, we got 20 political capital. We probably will want to reshuffle our cabinet at some point. There are probably people that are better suited for, for, these, uh, for these cabinet jobs. So we'll look to do that at some point in the near future. However... I think that getting on top, getting on top of this deficit is a really, really, really good sort of first problem to solve. Because let's be brutally honest, right? Let's be brutally honest. If we have money, then it's going to be super easy to solve all of our problems as long as we have money in the first place. It's literally that simple. And speaking of money, let's go into our financial overview. This is a breakdown of our income. The vast majority of our income, 34% of it to be precise, is coming from income tax. Very, 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 very interesting indeed. Uh, payroll tax, sales tax, government borrowing. This is this is a bad, 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 bad statistic to see. This is representative of how large our deficit is. This is how much money we're borrowing each and every each and every quarter. So not even uh, not even each and every year. Either way, the payroll tax, I believe, is a uh, is a brand new mechanic in Democracy Four. It wasn't in Democracy Three. So there you go. Uh, expenditure, where's where's our money going out? State health service, yeah, so the NHS is consuming rather a large percentage of my expenditure at this moment in time. State pensions as well, taking up a, a big chunk. Military spending. Debt interest, debt interest is, is a problem, right? It very, very much is a problem. So this is just the interest that we're paying on the 1.81 trillion in government debt at this moment in time. And, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about how much debt interest we pay on the uh, on the next on the next screen over there but yeah as you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff here notably right notably alcohol abuse and street gangs you can see they're represented by solid yellow uh, solid, solid yellow what am i talking about solo red solid red bubbles right there alcohol abuse street gang costing the economy roughly three billion a quarter when you uh, when you add them together also this efficiency with which government money is spent and efficiency with which taxes are raised pretty darn important pretty darn important the higher number the better, really, and it comes from who is in charge of the uh, who's in charge of the cabinet position. I can't remember if it's for the economy or whatever, but it's it's one of the cabinet positions, and it basically determines exactly how much efficiency you have. Doesn't particularly matter for now, anyway. Uh, if we have a little look at the charts here, this is probably the most useful screen in all of democracy. As you can see, our credit rating is triple B at this moment in time, which determines exactly how much interest we pay on our huge, 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 huge pile of debt. Uh, so we want to see if we can try and increase the credit rating so that we pay less on our debt. That is absolutely something that we would uh, we would be keen to do. Uh, debt to GDP ratio, 107% of, uh, of, uh, of GDP at this moment in time. That's not terrible. The other thing that we need to pay attention to is the state of the global economy. The global economy has peaked. The way that this game works is that it goes in cycles. 
cycles. So much like a sine wave, you will see the global economy rise, then you will see the global economy fall, then you'll see the global economy rise again. We are on the way down. The global economy is going to tank, which means that it's going to drag our GDP, which is the, the real indication of how much money we make. Uh, it's going to drag our GDP down. Cool. All right. I think we've covered all of the basics. Uh, I do like to tutorialize for, you know, the first, uh, the, first uh, the first 10 minutes or so when I'm playing a brand new game, just in case people do not have uh, do not have an understanding of the previous the previous entries into the franchise. Either way, with that with that little bit of knowledge, we should be just about ready to rock and roll. So, solving the financial problem in the first instance, what do we want to do? Well, I think to be honest, cutting expenditure is a is a pretty safe bet. Now, we can cut we can cut the expenditure down by twenty five percent if we wanted to, right? If we wanted to, that would take our expenditure from 39 billion all the way down to uh, all the way down to 27 billion or so. Now, these lovely little indicators have been uh, have been introduced, and they actually allow you they actually allow you to to spend different amounts of political capital in order to implement a increase or a decrease in spending on a specific policy. So if we only spend uh, eight political capital, we can get up to a 10% reduction. Or if we spend six pol uh, political capital, we can get a up to up to 10% increase in spending, right? So we could spend a political capital or we could spend 16 and reduce it by 25%. It is technically a little bit more efficient political capital wise to reduce uh, to reduce expenditure by 25%. However, that's going to have a knock on effect on like a whole bunch of stuff. Now, is this a problem? I mean, it is a it is a problem. Obviously, we do not want to see a decrease in the capability of our health service. That's not good at all. I'm, I'm not happy about that. However, the fact of the matter is, is that we are running a deficit at this moment in time. And the state health service is consuming the vast majority of our the vast majority of our uh, of our finances. So that's what we're going to do in the first instance. Now that should that should save me around about 13 billion. It's not going to be quite 13 billion, but it's going to be not far off. Now, the thing that we need to consider is that we are running a deficit of 13 billion at this moment in time. Let's do it. Okay. Now that, you know, I will say reducing reducing the uh, the spending on our health service will have further knock-on problems, right? It will it will cause problems further down the line. However, short term, getting on top of our deficit situation is is what I want to do. If we can if we can start generating a little bit of money, then we can start then we can start hopefully paying down a little bit of our debt, and that means hopefully again reducing the rate of interest that we pay on our loans. And if we're able to do that, then we're going to be able to start making money. It's just free money. If we can reduce our debt, it's literally just free money. Anyway, uh, something brand new that Democracy 4 has done. You see all these little pips over the top of uh, over the top of the policy. That is actually that actually shows you how much you can increase or decrease uh, spending on a specific policy. So each and every one of these pips on the on the outside of the circle are representative of 10% increase, 25% increase, over 25% increase, and vice versa for uh, for decreasing. Community policing, by the way, is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant policy and definitely something that we want to invest in. It's actually super, super cheap for what it gives you. I, I feel like it probably shouldn't be that cheap, but you know what? That's just my opinion. Anyway, uh, intelligence services as well, uh, and the police force, which I've clicked on. I meant to click on intelligence services, but that's okay. Uh, the police service will require more funding in order to fund it to the max, but we will probably end up doing that. But again, we're not going to increase any spending until we have sorted out the deficit situation. It literally is that simple. Income tax, unfortunately, we do not have the political capital to bump up income tax. I would kind of like to bump up income tax, even if it's only by about 10%. So I think that we're probably going to do that on the next turn. On this turn, however, is there anything that we can do? The payroll tax? Maybe the payroll tax could be could be our sort of cash cow. It is going to incre uh, increase the uncompetitive economy modifier, and I really, really, really don't want to do anything to upset the uh, state of the economy at this moment in time. The reason that I don't want to upset the the state of the economy at this moment in time is because the uncompetitive economy, as well as harming capitalists' opinion of me, which is something that I should consider as the capitalists already hate me, it also decreases GDP by 10%, right? 
a 10% reduction to GDP just because we've got this uncompetitive economy in place. If we can solve the problem of an uncompetitive economy, boom, just like that, it's a 10% increase to our GDP. Super, super, super value. So we're incentivized to try and sort that out as quickly as possible. Uh, the other thing that I probably want to solve really, really quickly is, uh, is alcohol abuse. There's a couple of different ways that we can go about sorting alcohol abuse. By the way, I should have explained. These are all of the these are all of the factors that cause the thing, and these are all of the effects of the thing, right? So alcohol consumption is very, very high. It means that it has caused the problem of alcohol abuse. Therefore, crime is increased, health is decreased, the demand for healthcare is increased, and the amount that uh, the amount that the health service is forking out to treat this issue has increased by whatever that is, seventeen percent. So community policing, we can already see, decreases the effects of alcohol abuse. Uh, same with the police force. Poverty, unemployment also feed into alcohol abuse. So if we want to solve alcohol abuse, solving either alcohol consumption, poverty, or unemployment would be a pretty good start. Now, alcohol consumption is in of itself uh, its own its own little what modifier statistic whatever the case doesn't particularly matter uh the alcohol law the alcohol tax gdp poverty unemployment all feed into how much alcohol the population drinks now we can directly control a couple of these things gdp is just this big thing that we can't control if gdp goes down then alcohol consumption i think will also go down which I, i'm hoping um, which is fine. Uh, poverty, unemployment, we can also kind of indirectly control, much like GDP, but what we can control is the alcohol law and the alcohol tax. So, the alcohol tax is something that we can increase. We can increase it right to the very top if we had 10 political capital. It would actually bring in more money for us, which would be really, really great. And it would also completely destroy alcohol consumption. Unfortunately, we do not have the political capital to do that at this moment in time. What about solving the alcohol law? We could change the alcohol law around. Unfortunately, we cannot do that because the alcohol law can only be adjusted in increments and we do not have the political capital to to deal with that right well you know what i'm not super unhappy with the state of with the state of this i mean what about if we look at introducing a brand new policy eh? we could look at introducing a brand new policy like perhaps an alcohol awareness campaign that seems pretty important let's see if we can do that i know i said that i didn't want to spend any money but 97 million pounds is is hardly money to be honest it's hardly money and that's going to reduce alcohol consumption by 13 percent. so you know that's a half measure really to tackle the alcohol problem but it's at least a start cool Okay, before we head on to the next turn, you should know, by the way, this game is uh, this game is done in turns, uh, and it is going to be 16 turns until the next election. Each turn is three months. It's a quarter of the year. Let's have a little look at all of these screens up here, shall we? We have got the intelligence briefing, brand new intelligence briefing uh, screen here. Uh, intelligence, intelligence services detect all of the different groups that potentially can attract support. So sustainability trust, senior rights society, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of like pressure groups, which can then feed into violent pressure groups if you do not if you do not satisfy a specific uh, a specific group for example the capitalist group if we have a little look here you can see that the capitalist group feeds into the federation of something what is it the federation of entrepreneurs okay and then also it feeds into the invisible hand so if capitalists become so unbelievably disgruntled then they will just take a pop at you it's literally that simple. Now, we can get more intel on all of these groups by increasing the amount of money that we spend on security-related policies. For example, armed policing, detention without trial, mandatory chip implant, intelligence services funding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The little green circles basically show uh, where we where we stand on the funding level. For example, the intelligence services is right in the middle. I mean, we could increase we could increase the uh, we could increase the amount of money that we spend on the intelligence services spy satellite network to be honest that seems like a pretty good deal for two billion pounds a year it seems a little bit unrealistic that we'd have a spy satellite network for uh, for for that small a price but that's fine uh, either way that is that is that that's the intelligence services we're probably going to want to increase the intelligence services spending it's one of the best policies in the game frankly uh, and we should we should look to expand it Either way, nothing to worry about at this moment in time. Nobody has, nobody's been riled up enough to join a uh, to join a group quite yet, which is kind of nice. Right. So that is the that is the security briefing screen. Let's chat about the icon control. So this is a brand new feature in Democracy Four, and it actually allows us to completely change the layout of the game. I'm probably going to be remaining on weighted. Uh, however, we can actually see 
we can actually see a nice visual representation of exactly where our income is coming from and exactly where our income is going. So as you can see, the big, the big, 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 big circles here are the uh, are either the big income or the big expenditure items. So we've got the state health service, which is costing 27 billion per quarter. We've got the income tax, which is raising 50 billion a quarter. Either way, a nice visual representation. Uh, policy popularity, you can see which policies people like, which policies people dislike. It's probably worth mentioning that liberals do not like tasers. Liberals do not like tasers. So anything that liberals oppose probably will get a big uh, a big red mark on the screen but you know things that liberals do like and things that the population as a whole do like will uh, will show up as green either way um influence i have absolutely no idea what this does and also value i have also no idea what uh, what this does but there we go that's that's the that's the bubbles for you. Uh, we've already chatted about voting intentions. We can get a sort of snapshot of exactly which groups think of what policies and and if they uh, if they like me or if they don't like me, etc. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as we come up to an election. That's the opinion poll screen. We've already talked about the finance screen, political policies and, uh, and policy ideas screen. We've already addressed that. Achievements. I don't believe that achievements are in the alpha quite yet, although this is something that we will be referring to uh, a lot, actually, as we go forward, because getting all of these achievements is something that I very, very, very much want to do, and I'm very, very excited about. Cabinet ministers, we're almost certainly going to go for a cabinet reshuffle next turn. However, each cabinet minister is broken down by loyalty, experience, effectiveness, campaigning, and sympathies. Sympathies are basically... If you appease this group, if I appease the religious group and the motorist group, then this cabinet minister will like me. Literally that simple. Uh, their loyalty is uh, is how likely they are to resign and how much political capital they generate. Experience. Experience is what I was referring to earlier when I chatted about uh, efficiency with which taxes are raised. So this is determined by the current chancellor. So the current chancellor is who exactly? I think it is... I think it's you. I think it's I think it's you. I think it's the tax. I think it's the tax person if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It's it's the tax person. It is Beverly Moore. Excellent. Cool. So uh so yeah, that's 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 you. That's experience. Effectiveness, it no, sorry. Effectiveness is how good they are at implementing the policy so that was what i was just talking about and then experience is how long they've been how long they've been a minister okay a little bit confusing but we got there in the end campaigning is only good for uh, for elections so we don't need to worry about that anyway look this doesn't matter this is all sort of like micro 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 level macro level we need to sort out the economy and we're uh, and we're doing that uh, the setting screen the uh, the party screen this is a, a pretty a pretty cool interface actually we can see exactly what our what our supporters and our our opposition uh, opposition members think you can see the membership of our party nine million members in this party is very very good gives us a, a little boost at the election uh manifesto speeches fundraising all of this stuff is only really is only really essential when when uh, when an election is called and in the run-up to an election so without further ado 23 minutes into the episode let's smash the next turn button right that is a comprehensive update on where we are what the situation is all right so here is the quarterly report that is telling us exactly what is up with our situation uh, in the country so gdp is in a pretty good place it decreased a little bit but that's fine unemployment looks like it increased mostly because i reduced funding in the sta uh, state healthcare service and that of course means that we increase unemployment by letting go of some of the people that are working in our health service health is probably going to go down a little bit because we've reduced the uh, the funding in the state health service but everything else is roughly fine we'll get a little indicator here if it goes up or decreases substantially there's an urgent there's an urgent power line problem. Angry citizens are protesting against the project to build power lines through their villages. These power lines are necessary to increase further uh, use of renewable energy sources. Not building them would be an economic setback, but if you ignore the citizens, this will make, it even angrier, uh, make them even angrier and supportive of their cause. Build power lines. Nobody wants power lines, but they have to be built somewhere. Uh, stop construction. There are alternative ways to explore, like underground power lines. Uh, sure. You know what? Let's stop construction. So capitalists don't like that decision, but farmers do. And this will happen regardless of what uh, 
of what policy decision we made there, we will always end up upsetting one group or uh, and ups upsetting one group and making another group happy. Cool. There is a situation imminent. Internet crime is about to take off. Now, internet crime will become a negative modifier. It'll become like an alcohol abuse modifier, a big, a big red modifier, if we allow it to go above the start trigger. So basically, we want to see if we can if we can stop that from happening. One of the ways that we could probably do that is by trying to crack down on crime or by perhaps funding the intelligence services uh, a little bit more. The thing that you've got to bear in mind is that if internet crime uh, goes up, if, if we, for example, have a massive spike in crime and that triggers internet crime to go up, then unfortunately, we're not going to be able to deactivate internet crime until we can get it below the stop trigger here. So it'll It'll trigger if it goes above the start trigger, and it'll stop if it goes below the stop trigger. So, you know, we need to get on top of our crime situation, almost certainly. Funding the intelligence services might just be the most cost-effective way of doing that, but we'll see. Also, solving organized crime would be uh, would be pretty good. Uh, the polls, not, uh, not a big deal. The budget report, the budget report is actually not good not good at all this is none of this is good actually no we we've cut we've cut the funding we've cut the funding in our uh, in our health service which is which is terrible well it's terrible but it was a necessary a necessary setback and yet we are still 11 billion 11 billion down the hole now that is because our gdp has fallen and the global economy has absolutely tanked that is a massive decrease and um, you can actually see you can actually see unfortunately that I think our interest rates are about to go up next turn. So we are not exactly looking forward to that. Anyway, moving right along, we got 22 political capital to burn this turn. What do I want to do? Well, first of all, I want to have a little look at alcohol abuse. Alcohol abuse needs to start coming down and it needs to start coming down uh, fast. Very, very fast indeed. I also want to increase income tax. I think I want to in uh, increase income tax by... Probably 9% or so. Probably 9%. That's going to take me from uh, from 51 billion in profit up to up to 61 billion. So that's going to be about a 10 billion increase. It's a 10% increase to income tax. I don't like that. It costs a lot of political capital to muck around with tax, but I think that that's a worthwhile a worthwhile thing to do. Yeah, don't love that decision. That's still going to leave us in a little bit of a deficit situation. So I've got I've got two options here, right? One option is that we reshuffle the cabinet right now, which is definitely something that I think I want to do. But I also could get on top of my I could get on top of my uh, my alcohol problem. So we've got the alcohol tax, and I would dearly love to increase that by a lot. Yeah, I'd love to pop that up by uh, by as much as I possibly can, but that will cost me 10 political capital. It is going to absolutely tank alcohol consumption, though. I, I think, to be honest, I think I want to switch out my cabinet purely because my chancellor at the moment is hot garbage, right? Absolutely hot garbage, which means, which means, if I go into income, efficiency with which taxes are raised... Efficiency with which taxes are raised is only 98%. If we can get an extra 2% there, I mean, an extra 2% of 130 billion is what? It's an extra couple of billion a year, right? So if we can if we can get somebody who's not completely terrible, then that would be great. So I think that we're gonna go for I think that we're gonna go for a reshuffle. Um, we're only gonna we're only gonna shuffle out the people that are terrible though, which is kind of cool. Again, a brand new feature, a brand new feature of democracy, uh, democracy four is that. In Democracy 3, you had to reshuffle your entire cabinet, and if you had somebody that was really, really good in the world of foreign policy, then, um, as foreign minister, that is, then you had to get rid of them. Now, we can just get rid of the people that are not performing very, very well. Okay, so the first most important industry or category to fill, I should say, is tax. Now, I kind of want to sort by loyalty because that is... Pretty important to me, but I also want experience. Can I sort by experience? I mean, experience is... Experience is good. Experience is very, very good. And even if it means... Even if it... Oh, Beverly Moore, you're... You're the most experienced. You're the most experienced tax person. Okay, I hate that. I hate that a lot. Right, well, you know what? If we can't optimize for experience, we're going to optimize for loyalty. Environmentalists and capitalists, that is a... That is an interesting... An interesting, uh, an interesting group, grouping over there, right? 
we're gonna get 1.8 political capital from Hazel Adams. I think, welcome to the job, Hazel Adams. You are very, very loyal. As long as we can keep appeasing the environmentalists and the capitalists, you will remain on side. That's absolutely what I intend to do. I should say that I don't have a particular... Uh, sure. I don't have a particular grouping that I want to appease. I don't have a particular route that I want to take the country. I don't want to make the country into a socialist utopia. I don't want to make it into a police state. None of that nonsense. I just want to... I just want to experience exactly what the heck this game has to offer. And hopefully we're going to do it in a way that... Um, that is uh, that is game winning, or at least will reduce our debt. We want to reduce our debt to zero. I want to save the United Kingdom. It's literally that simple. However, uh, religious and capitalists. Now, I would choose you for the job, Dan Martinez. However, the problem is, is that religious people like you and capitalist people like you. Religious people don't really like me. Capitalist people also don't like me. So if you get into the job, then you are going to start disliking me a lot. Patriots. What do patriots think of me? Not not very highly, to be honest. Not very highly. Religious and patriot. Okay, there is only a garbage... Only a garbage group of people that will accept this job. You know what? At least you give me 2.1 political capital. I believe it was Kristen Alexander who was, who was in the post before. The sooner that I can get these... Excellent. The sooner that I can get these people into, into their roles, the sooner that they're going to be able to start acquiring experience, the sooner they're going to, you know continue to get better and better and better in their roles. Have I made the right decision there? I don't actually know. Either way, with three political capital, I don't think that there's much that we can do. Tobacco awareness campaign. Do we have a, a smoking problem? I don't think we do. Tobacco usage. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Tobacco usage is is okay, to be honest. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, respiratory disease is being increased by tobacco usage. I mean, we could increase the tobacco tax. But we can't do that this turn. I mean, we could introduce we could introduce introduce a tobacco awareness campaign. That might not be the worst thing in the world. Only costs ninety seven million pounds at the fullest. But there we go. Now, 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 a business startup campaign, city farms, Labor Day bank holiday, national business council, and a trade council is what we can introduce in the economy policy. Charity tax relief. By the way, a lot of people are very, very, very in favor of this, which is great. Healthy eating campaign. That would be good. Honestly, we should probably just get, we should probably just get the business startup campaign because... Because, 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 this makes capitalists happy with me. I now have a lot of vested interest in making sure that the capitalists don't completely hate me. Because one of my, one of my ministers, I believe, yeah, Dan, one of my uh, ministers has got, uh, has got capitalist sympathies. Perish the thought. All right, so let's see where our deficit's going to be next turn. It's probably going to be getting a little bit worse before it gets better. Don't, don't take that the wrong way. Don't take that the wrong way. Okay. Budget report. What's the situation? What is the situation here? Our income did actually improve. Okay, that is um that is quite nice. That is quite nice indeed. The state health service has been has been trimmed quite effectively. So that is uh that is pretty darn decent, if indeed I do say so myself. Very, very happy with that. Our deficit has actually decreased a substantial amount. Wonderful. That is very, very good. So, you know what? This this unlocks the possibility of perhaps solving the deficit problem just by solving the alcohol problem. So that is a clear that is a clear route to victory there. The intelligence briefing is telling me that we are in a little bit of a dodgy situation. A little bit of a dodgy situation, but that's okay. There's only slight interest in all of these pressure groups. That is totally fine. Uh, income tax, I do want to increase. I, I really, 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 really do want to increase. And with a 10% increase to income tax, I think, I think, I think we're going to be fine. Let's do it. Yeah. I swear this is going to be the last time that I'm going to that I'm going to tinker with income tax. We've got to be so careful with income tax because it can very very easily create a situation where we have uh, we have what's called brain drain where basically everyone who has money just evacuates from the country because they can pay less tax elsewhere. It's a genuine concern. We really need to consider it. Okay. So that's going to solve our deficit problem. Hopefully this debt uh, this debt stat isn't going to increase past this point. We don't want to get into a debt spiral. We need to get uh, a handle on our finances before 
before it's too late. We really, really do. Uh, uncompetitive economy, solving the uncompetitive economy is going to be our next big task. Um, I do want to sort out alcohol abuse before we move on. So let's see if I can modify the alcohol consumption. I want to introduce very, 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 very high taxes on alcohol. That's going to cost me, what, 10 political capital. It's going to reduce alcohol consumption by something like 48%, which is huge. Poverty is going to increase a little bit. Equality is going to decrease. And, uh, and poor people are going to dislike me. I am afraid that that's just something that we're going to have to endure. It, it is it is an un unfortunate an unfortunate necessity in order to cure the problem of alcohol abuse. Once we have fixed the problem of alcohol abuse, then we can reverse these tax changes. But for now, we need to solve alcohol abuse because it's a big old problem. Right, organized crime uh, is mitigated by the intelligence services. Honestly, funding the intelligence services more, as I've already said, is a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic value policy. Same with community policing and also same with policing. Policing is a little bit less of a value policy. However, it's it's pretty good. Uh, how much would that cost? That costs round about half a billion extra. And it's going to reduce corruption, street gangs, and alcohol abuse. Corruption, I believe, is a mechanic that was brought across from Democracy 3 Africa. Uh, we can talk a little bit about it in a second. Also going to reduce violent crime and crime. So it's a, it's a pretty good policy here. Uh, makes conservatives like us and state employees like us as well. Also increases the number of state employees that we do have. And state employee membership. Not to mention the fact that it actually reduces unemployment. Okay, let's do it. It's only going to cost me two political capital. Very, 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 very cheap to do. Uh, community policing, by the way, I can still increase to the absolute max if I wanted to. Do I want to do this? I know, by the way. I know that I've said. I know that I've said it's, uh, it's not something that I want to do. I don't want to spend money. I don't want to spend money until I've got a, a handle on my deficit situation. However, I think that I have actually got a, a handle on my deficit situation. So that's kind of good. All right. Really eking every point of value out of the uh, out of the political capital over here. Nice. Graduate tax. We can reduce the graduate tax for zero political capital. Generational wealth gap, by the way, is brand new. Do I care about this at all? I don't think I care about this at all. Not at this moment in time anyway. No. No, sorry. I don't think I do. Honestly, I think that this is a good first couple of turns. I'm feeling I'm feeling good. My popularity has plummeted, uh, most probably because everyone hates me because of the increase in income tax. But that's okay. We'll just we'll just pull a politics move and reduce income tax before an election, even if it involves increasing increasing the deficit. Uh, we've got a oil drilling opportunity here. Hmm. Allow oil drilling or prevent oil drilling? So this is basically a case of, do we want to appease, I presume, capitalists or environmentalists? Well, environmentalists are a pretty big... I've got a lot of environmentalists, uh, environmentalist ministers, I believe, or at least, I've got at least one. To be honest, I think the decision is that we appease the capitalists. The capitalists are... Yeah, there we go. Okay, environmentalists get very unhappy. Capitalists only care slightly. Not entirely sure that that was worthwhile, but there we go. Oil supply increases. Oil supply is a little bit of a, a little bit of a nebulously important thing. We've got oil price over here, and then oil demand, and then also oil supply over here, which will now increase for the next turn. Eh, it's not really that important, to be honest. I I don't really think that it's that important anyway. Uh, cool. Very, very cool. Are we going to be in a surplus situation next turn? I believe so. I hope so. That is the dream. That is the plan. Please, video game. Excellent. What have we got? Royal wedding. There may be some arguments over the return of investment on our nation's royal family. However, when you need the electorate to be distracted, you can rely on blanket coverage in the press when there's a royal wedding. Excellent. Conservatives love it. Tourism is also, uh, is also increasing. Right. So GDP. GDP decreased a little bit, which I'm not exactly happy about tonight's news headlights to headlights news headlines all over our country there are young bright intelligent students who this year will be denied the chance to study at university the answer is simple those students come from poor families with no absolutely no money uh, from the government in the form of university grants they're about to find out that education uh, is not something the poor are entitled to in this country it's a disgrace makes me ashamed to be a citizen uh, government is denying me any hope of a future one student tells us okay so we could introduce we could introduce university grants if we wanted to um if we wanted to if we wanted to stop that headline from running. However, I'm not overly 
Not overly bothered about it at this moment in time. Let's have a little look at the budget situation. Holy cow, I'm actually, I'm actually running a surplus. That is because, that is because everyone is paying a ridiculously large amount of income tax. Hopefully, I can, hopefully I can spend enough money to make people forget that they're paying me a lot of money. That's right. Okay. So, uncompetitive economy, how's it looking? Looking a little bit better. Looking a little bit better. How can we, how can we directly impact this uncompetitive economy modifier? Well... I'm glad you asked, dear viewer. I'm glad you asked. We've got corporation tax, minimum wage, and payroll tax, which all feed into the uncompetitive economy, not to mention productivity and wages. Now, productivity can be directly affected, but only, like, nebulously. There are a few policies that we have here. However, most of these are, in and of themselves, other things which I can only indirectly affect. So, for example, alcohol consumption. I can't directly affect alcohol consumption, but I can introduce policies which affect alcohol consumption. Alcohol consumption, the more alcohol consumption there is, the less productivity there is, etc. Right? So, if we want to increase productivity, then we want to decrease alcohol consumption, or we want to increase education, or we want to increase health, etc. Maternity leave? Maternity leave is taking a huge, 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 huge huge hit. I mean, maybe we should just reduce? Maybe we should just cancel. Maybe we should just cancel maternity leave. Maybe we should just cancel maternity leave. That seems like a terrible thing to do. Um, but you've got to sort of divorce your mind from reality in, uh, in the case of this game just a little bit. What is this? Judicial independence? Democracy. Ah, oh, interesting. Democracy has got its own has got its own little uh, has got its own little thing now. Also, corruption. Corruption has got its own little its own little pip. Any form of dishonest or unethical behavior by those in position uh, positions of authority. Okay, cool. So one of the things that we haven't really touched thus far is the military budget. Now, honestly, cutting our military budget is probably a decent idea. It is going to increase unemployment, which I'm not super happy about, but it is going to save us a ridiculously large amount of money. I think that that's exactly what we're going to do. It's also going to make the liberals slightly happier. So let's go for military spending. There's a whole bunch of stuff, by the way, that we can that we can do in the early game to uh, to fix our situation. And we're you know we're trying we're trying to we're trying to do it the the best way that we uh, that we possibly can. But there's no right decision to be made in a game like this. You just got to go with. You just got to go with what you please. Um, I will say that sometimes, oftentimes, it is really, really fun to go for a specific strategy. For example, socialist utopia. And, you know, you, you beeline down uh, down the road of a, a hardcore socialist or a hardcore capitalist or a hardcore dictator. Anything anything in that sort of vein is uh, is pretty darn cool. But, you know, in, in this first playthrough, we're just trying to reduce our debt to zero. We're trying to save the United Kingdom. It's literally that simple. Right. The respiratory disease is caused because the environment is in such a poor condition. The environment actually looks like it's in a pretty good place at this moment in time, but that's fine. Pollution controls, air travel, car usage, clean energy subsidies. I mean, if I was to boost clean energy subsidies, would that make a significant impact? It would make a significant impact to the environment and actually only costs like a billion pounds. So you know what? Let's go for that. Nine political capital. Wait, how much political capital did I spend on that? I don't know. I don't think it was nine political capital, was it? My bad. I didn't check. Either way, so that's something else that we're going to do. Uh, what else do we want to get ahead of? What else do we want to get ahead of? What do we want to sort? Uh, policing? I think we've sorted policing, to be honest. Police force is, I believe, all the way, is the way, is, uh, is going all the way up to the max. It should be, anyway. No, it's not all the way up to the max. Now it'll be all the way up to the max. Let's max it out. I know we're going to end up spending a lot on it, but that's fine. For political capital, excellent, let's do that. Intelligence services. Unfortunately, we cannot max fund intelligence services at this moment in time. I would dearly, whoops, I would dearly love to fund it as much as I possibly can, though. So let's do that. I should point out, by the way, that each and every policy has got a implementation delay, and that implementation delay is affected by the quality of the minister. So all of these policies are not going to happen instantly. However, there is the case, for example, uh, in the, I believe, the health service. If you cut that, then. If you cut that, then the money will immediately stop being spent. So, some things happen instantaneously, i.e. the amount of money that you're paying for the policy, and the effects are just oftentimes felt later on. Right, GDP 
GDP held steady, which means that I think that we should be profitable in profitable territory. Positive discrimination, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. The economic forecast, the economic forecast looks okay. The economic forecast looks absolutely okay. Uh, it doesn't look like our debt rate or interest rate did go up for some obscene reason. I don't know why, but it looks like it looks like we've always been on this triple B debt rating, which is fine. Income tax is the vast majority of our income. 46% of our income is coming from income tax. Very, very worrying. Efficiency with which taxes are raised, uh, on the it goes by the Chancellor's effectiveness, as I've already said. Yeah, you're not very effective. Also, these two people are not loyal anymore. It's self, self-employed and motorist, trade unionist and commuter. I don't know why the commuter is is different from uh, from a motorist. I feel like that is a very very similar voter group, to be honest. But hey ho, commuters literally only care about bus lanes and traffic congestion, whereas motorists care about cars. Weird. Anyway, uh, we've got a big old surplus. We've got a big old surplus, which means that we're going to get on top of our debt pile very, very soon. I don't really want to tinker with the finances altogether too much. Look at this. Alcohol abuse is on the way down. Very, very sharp decrease there, which is excellent. Mostly thanks to the increase in the alcohol tax. The alcohol consumption also will lead to an increase in productivity. Yep, there we go. That's starting to pick up. And when pro t productivity increases, uh, GDP increases, which is great but also the uncompetitive economy modifier decreases, which is ever so important. Right. How else can we solve the uncompetitive economy? Um, solving the minimum wage issue. I say solving the minimum wage issue. It's not, it's not really about solving the issue, but I think that maybe we want to see if we can, maybe we want to see if we can just cancel the policy or at least reduce it as much as we possibly can because that will reduce the that will reduce the uncompetitive economy modifier <sighs> yeah but then we're going to increase poverty i don't really i don't really want to increase poverty but we can mitigate against that by using food stamps now food stamps are one of the best policies in the game i would say that it's actually an overpowered policy that sounds a little bit sad to say but it is it is literally only good it is literally only good. Um, health, poor earnings, poor uh, poor opinion, poverty, decrease, socialist, uh, socialist opinion, uh, farmer's income, farmer's opinion, and equality is all up because of this policy. It does cost a little bit of money, but 6 billion, frankly, when, we've, when we're running a surplus of 11 billion, is actually okay. This surplus is very, very good. The thing that you've got to bear in mind is that our expenditure is, is only being spent with... Uh, 70 or sorry 97 percent efficiency which is not great our income is only being collected with 95 percent efficiency that will increase that will get better we will be able to improve that statistic not to mention if our gdp improves then our money coming in through the door will improve which is ever so important organized crime is on the way is on the way down street gangs unfortunately is relatively stubborn, mostly because my unemployment is increasing because I uh, reduced military spending by quite a lot. Turning to the environment just briefly, do we want to see if we can solve the environmental problems? Respiratory disease, respiratory disease is a problem for sure. Improving the environment would be a good first, a good first, uh, a good first port of call to be honest. I think maybe we want to see if we can introduce an environmental, an environmental focused policy. Do we have any environmental focused policies? Healthy eating campaign, keep the country tidy campaign. I believe, yeah, it's just a straight bonus. It's just a straight bonus for the environment. Costs 112, 112 million a turn. Pocket change as far as I'm concerned. Healthy eating campaign, that will, that will help out with obesity, but not, uh, but not majorly. Cycling campaign, telecommuting initiative. Let's go for a telecommuting initiative. Working from home. Costs 700 million. That's actually quite a lot of money. But I think I'm going to fully fund it. The reason I'm going to fully fund it is important. And um, the telecoms industry, this is a brand new policy in Democracy 4. However, car usage, car usage, car usage, car usage is here. Car usage actually feeds negatively into the environment and also to traffic congestion if we can find a way to reduce car usage then that would be that would be great 
car usage doesn't actually directly impact any of the voter groups. However, traffic congestion does. This is traffic congestion. No, that's bus lanes. Which one's traffic congestion? Is that traffic congestion? I think that's traffic congestion. That's traffic congestion. Excellent. So if we decrease the number of cars on the road without, um, without, you know, for want of a better phrase, pissing off the commuters and the motorists, then, you know, we're going to be getting more votes. It's literally that simple. Okay, so far our popularity has recovered a little bit. Um, that's mostly probably due to the fact that people have got used to paying income tax. I know. I'm not, I'm not happy about it. Not happy about the fact that, uh, not happy about the fact that I had to increase it in the first place, but it's life. It's life. Okay, positive discrimination. There are calls for a law to be expressly set quotas on uh, employment and ethnic and other minorities by large corporations and government institutions. Uh, put pressure on companies to give higher priority to some job candidates than other. I think we passed this law because I suspect that that is going to end up making liberals happy. It does indeed. It literally only upsets conservatives. Okay, I mean, that is such a great, that is such a great policy to pass. I mean, of course, unless you're going for a conservative-focused playthrough, in which case you'd probably want to do the exact opposite. But there we go. Okay, moving on to the next turn. Where are we? Oh, look at this. What a brilliant turn. Let's first look at GDP. GDP, again, held roughly steady. Looks like it decreased ever so slightly. You can just see over there uh, where my mouse is ever so slightly. Uh, health is health is actually going up. Education is, again, roughly steady. Unemployment is increasing. That is very, very unfortunate. Crime, though, looks like it went down a heck of a lot, which is great because that feeds into, that feeds into a whole bunch of stuff, including GDP, prison cost, etc. So we're actually going to end up spending less money and also making more money, which is very, very important. Cool. Right, poverty. Poverty took a huge, huge, huge plunge, mostly because of food stamps. We've actually decreased our poverty to a situation uh, where it's better than it was at the start of the game. Again, I'm telling you, food stamps are a fantastically good policy. They really are very, very overpowered. Factory farming law, we'll get to that in a little bit. The global economy is in the midst of a deep, 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 deep recession. But the fact that we have managed to balance our books at this time of, of, of deep global recession is very, very good. It proves that our, you know, that our GDP has got a level of resilience that, frankly, I didn't expect. I expected our GDP to sort of ride along with the global economy. I expected it to ride into the ground, but that hasn't happened. You can also see that, hopefully, the amount of debt that we have has peaked. So that is very, very good. Very, very, very good. Uh, okay, everyone seems to be liking us. If I have a little look at what's going on. Liberals love me. Key voter group right there. Really, really liked me. Poor people like me. Another key voter group right there. Capitalists don't love me. Don't love me, but that's, that's okay. Right, so alcohol abuse, I suspect, yep, will be ending next turn. That's going to be unlocking an extra 2.39 billion pounds of, uh, of goodness. Ghettos, how can we get on top of ghettos? Ghettos is mostly impacted by street gangs, to be honest. If we can solve the problem of street gangs, then I think we will be able to solve the problem of ghettos. Organized crime, I will, uh, I would hope, will also be ending soon. Intelligence services, yeah, look, we just need to bump that right up to the right up to the max. It does, unfortunately, make liberals unhappy. Let me see if there's another way that I can go about solving that problem of organized crime. Yeah, I wonder if there is. Okay, let's go into law and order. Anti-corruption agency? No, I'm really, I'd really love National Armed Forces Week. I think that's only going to improve Patriot's opinion of me. Witness Protection Program. I, I think the Witness Protection Program is definitely something that we want to implement. I feel like liberals would really, really like it. Um, let's see if we can implement it, actually. Oh, truthfully, that doesn't make liberals happy. However, the Witness Protection Program does decrease violent crime and organized crime, both of which I was saying, hey, we need to get a handle on this, so organized crime is, uh, is great. Narcotics. What is the narcotics situation? I mean, we could legalize, we could legalize cannabis if we do want to do that. That will cost 32 political capital. It's very, very expensive to do. It would, it would increase organized crime, but it would decrease organized crime. 
Right. That definitely makes sense. Diane Martinez, you are you're you're with the religious and the conservative voters. That's that's unfortunate, actually. That's unfortunate. We're trying to do a balancing act. We're trying to do a balancing act where we're trying to keep the entirety of our cabinet happy, and at the end of the day, we're only appeasing. We're only appeasing a couple of them. Anyway, you know what I think we should do? I think, you know, everything is in a is in a, is in a good place in terms of law and order. Like, we're actually gonna, we're actually gonna start knocking things out really, really quickly. As I say, street gangs is, uh, is on the way down. That's great. CCTV cameras. I mean, we could, we could implement a face recognition system. But that's not really going to solve many problems, is it? No, not really. Not really at all. Respiratory disease. I do think that we want to solve uh, solve this problem. Car usage has decreased just a little bit, which is kind of great. Very, very happy with that. Road building is another one, actually. Road building is something that we can reduce basically... Basically to nothing. To reduce car usage, reduce traffic con uh, congestion. Well, actually, I say that it will reduce traffic congestion. It won't. It's holding up. It's holding up my unemployment at the moment. See, this is the problem. This is the problem. My unemployment is increasing, and there is no way, there is no way for me to directly reduce unemployment without spending money. That's the thing. Telecoms industry. This is brand new, by the way. Fun fact brand new um yeah there's no way there's no way that i can reduce unemployment directly and i don't think i really want to to be honest labor laws even that doesn't actually impact unemployment pro employer we could do that we could do that it will make the trade unionists and the socialists dislike me however capitalists and productivity will increase i think that i do actually want to do that Okay, let's do it. It's maybe an unpopular thing to do, but we'll do it anyway. Capitalists represent a fairly significant portion of the uh, of the voter group, which is important anyway. Business startup campaign. Yeah, honestly, more policies like that would be great at this moment in time. Young entrepreneur scheme. Exactly. That is exactly what I was after. Okay, decreases the socialism uh, the membership uh, membership of the socialism voter block. I'm not bothered about that to be honest. I'm not really threatened by the socialists at this moment in time. Uh, capitalists, yes, they're gonna like me more. Youths are gonna like me more. Who cares about youths? They don't vote anyway. Frankly. Uh, the intelligence briefing is telling me that my security effectiveness is poor. Fine. Uh, however, the, uh, the pressure group membership is also pretty darn low, which is, which is also fine. Factory farming law set tougher standards, or do we want to leave unchanged? Well, do we have many environmentalists? The number of environmentalists that we've got is... It's small, actually. I think I'd rather appease... Whoops. I think I'd rather appease the capitalists. Yeah. Okay, capitalists don't love that, apparently. Farmers do. Environmentalists don't really hate it, and neither do liberals. All right. Interesting, interesting decision there. Okay, we're still running a surplus. Which is grand. We're going to go into the next turn. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is all good news, folks. This is all good news. We're getting on top of our... We're getting on top of our country. We're saving the United Kingdom. It's going great. Okay. GDP, a big enough increase to register as a little green arrow. That's fantastic. That is really, really good. I would wager that that is because alcohol abuse has ended. Health has increased dramatically, again, because alcohol abuse ended, and that was having a negative effect. Uh, unemployment has actually decreased, and I suspect that that is because GDP is doing so well that private business is actually uh, hiring workers, which is very, very important. Uh, female leader... Female leader has been elected as the new head of the opposition. Okay, that's great, because that means that liberals like us even more. Don't know how that works, but there we go. Okay, health, as I've already touched on, increased. Crime decreased dramatically. Look at that. That is a huge, huge, huge decrease. That's huge. Okay, a situation is imminent. We are in a situation where we are going to be seeing... We're going to be seeing tax evasion. Now, tax evasion is a big, big, big problem. So what tax evasion actually does is it basically is it basically means that you only collect 0 0.98. Sorry, you only collect 98% of all of the taxes that you should collect. 
and it actually scales. So the more taxes that you uh, that you leverage, the more tax evasion is going to occur. So what we want to do is basically see if we can reduce our taxes somewhere. Hopefully, before it gets before it gets too out of hand, reducing income tax may very well be may very well be what we do. Because we've got this alcohol abuse modifier ended, taken care of, we can actually, we can actually, actually, actually uh, afford to uh, afford to spend, afford to spend uh, a little bit of money on appeasing our appeasing our population. Look at that. That's a twelve billion dollar surplus. $12 billion surplus? What am I talking about? $12 billion pound surplus. Global economy has just about bottomed out, so we should expect... We should expect uh, a little bit of... A little bit of an uptick there, which is really, really nice. So, uh, sales tax? Reducing sales tax would be... Would be good. This is $21 billion here that this is bringing in. If I reduce this as low as it can go... I wish I could cancel this policy. I've got 20 political capital. Man, my cabinet are really... They are really trash. They're really doing a, a terrible job, in fact. Yeah, really doing a, a very, very bad job. Hmm. We've got to reduce... We've got to reduce one of the four taxes, right? We have to reduce one of the four taxes, whether it's capital gains, negligible. Corporation tax, negligible. Income tax, more negligible. More negligible, less negligible. Sales tax, not entirely negligible. Maybe we should just reduce income tax, to be honest. 10% decrease. I think that's what we do. Let's do it. Let's decrease income tax. I don't love... I don't love doing that, but it does only cost us two political capital. It is going to reduce our surplus almost down to zero. But again, we've got that uptick from the global economy coming very, very soon indeed. And we can rely on that. We can rely on that to transform to transform our finances. Right. Let's chat about tourism, shall we? Let's chat about tourism. Foreign relations are in a decent place. Foreign aid is costing... It's costing a little bit of money, actually, but it's uh, it's helping to prop up foreign relations, which is, uh, which is pretty, pretty good. Uh, tourism... Tourism just has a straight modifier on our GDP, so that's great. Street gangs is really dragging down tourism, unfortunately. 14% decrease to tourism right there. Uh, is there anything that we could do at this moment in time that would increase that would increase tourism? Well, actually, funny that you should mention that. Airline tax and border controls are two policies that we uh, that we uh, that we affect directly. Passport checks. I tell you what. What about what about if we what about if we completely reduce border controls now immigration how does that impact how does that impact uh, how does that impact everything because at the moment border controls are the only thing that is keeping our immigration at a relatively contained level ghettos also decreases immigration but i mean that's not exactly a policy that we can control If I was to reduce immigration, if I was to reduce immigration, it's caused by immigration. So ghettos are, are caused by immigration as well. So if we reduce immigration, we'll, I think, reduce ghettos too. Um, but again, we need to. We need, okay. I don't think I don't think we want to mess with this too too much. How's emigration doing? Emigration is not doing too bad uh, at all. The population. The population is holding roughly steady and is actually increased by maternity leave, interestingly enough. Okay, you know what? I don't think we want to mess with tourism altogether too much. However, what we can do is we can put in a tourism ad campaign. It's basically free. Basically free money, and it has a indirect impact on GDP. So hopefully that's going to make a difference. Diplomatic service. You know what? Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Foreign relations, again, are good. So let's get them. Let's get them too. Tobacco awareness campaign. FGM ban. Let's do that. Let's absolutely do that. Because that is going to make liberals happy with me. Also costs pretty much nothing to implement. Um, tobacco awareness campaign. Let's also do that. Because I really want to reduce my... 
Um, I really want to reduce my tobacco usage. Reducing tobacco usage will hopefully have a knock-on effect to productivity. It doesn't actually have a direct knock-on effect to productivity, even though I think it probably should. Tobacco usage, the more tobacco usage there is, the, the less productivity there is. I think that that would be... I think that would be... Uh, would be definitely a, a connection that should be made there. However, it does have an indirect connection through health. So the higher our health, the uh, the less of a negative to productivity there is. So we definitely want to get on top of the tobacco usage as well. I'm a little bit disgruntled with the fact that I've just implemented this brand new cabinet and everyone is already dunking on me. Not happy about that at all. Uncompetitive economy. The uncompetitive economy situation is slowly but surely getting getting itself back together. It looks to be decreasing. The minimum wage change has definitely made an impact there. Um, obesity. Obesity is entirely de is entirely dependent on food price and the GDP, um, the GDP of the country. So if we can solve the food price situation, i.e., if we make food more expensive, then that'll solve that. We could maybe we could maybe rectify that by we could maybe rectify that by uh, by using agriculture subsidies. We could cancel the agriculture subsidies or at least reduce them, and that will that will basically jack up the price of food and decrease obesity. Respiratory disease. Well, we've already we've already talked about how we're going to counter that, improving the environment, which is actually doing very very well, and also reducing tobacco consumption, organized crime. That's in a good place. Street gangs is in an even better place. Uh, ghettos hopefully should continue to come down. And once we solve street gangs, then ghettos should just disappear entirely. And it should be very, very, very quick, actually. Um, yeah, so I think, like, over the next couple of turns, we're gonna, we're gonna take this country... We're gonna take this country to new fantastic heights. But you know what? We're gonna have to address that. We're gonna have to address that in the next episode. This has just been such a meaty, meaty, meaty video. Uh, I really didn't intend for it to be either this long or to only travel half the way uh, towards the next general election. However, tutorializing at the start of the uh, at the start of the episode did mean that uh, it unfortunately took uh, a little while longer to get to where I wanted to be. But I hope you enjoy me sort of explaining all of my decisions, explaining the uh, the mechanics of the game. This is one of those games that I feel like I've got a fairly good understanding of. So if you've got any questions, let me know. Comments down below, as ever. Uh, also, if you're interested in checking out the Patreon, help make videos like this possible. Uh, check that out too. Uh, link down in the description. Also, thanks to Banana Nanana and C Senpai for being the two twenty-five dollar plus tier patrons. Thank you very, very much for watching, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye.